Oh, now we're live? Now we're live. Okay, hey guys. <laughs> now we're live. Hi. I'm Mortals Inc., Carlos Robles. On time as always, but now we're live. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Mortals Inc. Podcast. We're back again. Uh, I'm Carlos Robles. Josh is the technical advisor. Who's supposed to be technically on time, but that's okay. And then, of course, we have Nate Elwood, Good who's evening. here for the uh, for the review of to nerd what, it up, to, yeah, to, to nerd talk about up. some some great <laughs> nerd stuff and all that good stuff. Inform you gr- other nerds out there about this nerd stuff. Oh, nerds! I think that's a bad term anymore, isn't it? No, no, it's become cool now. It wasn't cool when we were young. And that's speaking cool of cool, now. have you watched that? Do uh, you got uh, Amazon Prime? Yes, I do. Did you I watch did. World of Darkness yet? I did. I did. What would you think of that? I was fairly impressed with it, and, and it, it was nostalgic for me because I, I loved that. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, the 90s, that was what I played. I know? know. That's what I thought of it. I watched it, and I watched, made these guys watch, and they didn't believe me. I met a few yeah. of those guys, actually. Yeah, I, totally nerdy. I remember meeting them at, re- at Gen Cons and stuff, like the, yeah, the yeah, creators yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's a very good uh, little history about World of Darkness, and why it's so popular it still is around and it is a good game and, and how it changed i mean not not the overall culture but l- at least the culture of gaming it really well that part it, it brought yeah. in people that you normally women mostly is what yeah, it brought a in a lot of like, women so a lot of a lot of uh sometimes bizarre women but well we're, we're all we're women. no worse than the guys that play yeah the game, so. believe me there's there's plenty cool. of bizarre people. So anyway, no, I just thought of that. I was looking at that. There's also another one on there. Amazon Prime had like Beholder Game. Well, there there was another good one. I, I don't know if it was Prime or not, but it was the the Art of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, it's Prime. That's Prime. Yeah, and that was a Prime. really good. I haven't watched that yet. documentary watch too. It later. Yeah. I get sucked into some stupid horror movies all along. And in fact, the product we're talking about tonight has a lot of those all old artists have done work for it. Have they? Yeah, I have to look at it. Oh, it's but, gorgeous. Uh, what else we got going on? Um. Josh is still, well, this Saturday, the 4th, June, January 4th, we have a Warhammer Underworlds Beast Grave tournament. It's a one-day tournament we're doing. It's just going to be a one-day tournament. Beast Grave, Warhammer Underworlds. It's a smaller version of Age of Sigmar. That's a world? No, next Saturday. Is it, does it use the same uh, rule set as the uh, Shadespire? Yeah, Shadespire same, is okay. the same group. Yeah. I it, like that game. It's it's really it's a good yeah, game. Yeah, I mean it's, it's got a, it's game. got a following. People buy it and everything like that. But I, I get the kits for it. I'm like, eh, yeah. let me just do a big old tournament in one day and I'm off next weekend, so I'll come and run it and see what's going on. I I have some interest. I only have uh sixteen slots, I think. Yeah. And uh so it's already got four or five people signed up, so hopefully oh, that's good. That's hopefully good. it'll be good. Um What's the entry fee? Five dollars. Oh that's I don't know. You, I you'll you'll fill up then. You'll fill I, up. I think it's yeah. five. I, I didn't go crazy. I'm not too crazy about it. So uh, there's that. At the end of January, we have Proto Spiel. I think it's January 31st, which is the game designers like little convention. So if you're a game designer, you want to get involved, check out Proto Spiel. It's run by Elliot and his wife. I'm going to murder her name. Alyssa, Asia. Help me out here, Josh. <laughs> Josh is just staring at me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I told. I can see it written, and I can't. Asia. Or Asia. Something. Yeah, I'm sorry. Anyway, Elliot. Don't comment. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm Don't sure. I'm on. sure I'll get an earful. But uh, yeah, that's at the end of the month. That's for game designers. If you're a game designer, you come in, and people come in and play test their stuff, and they talk about it and everything like that. It's an all weekend event. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, I think we open early for Saturday, Sunday, and close whenever. So it's a, it li- literally isn't all weekend. Yeah, yeah, it's it's something like that. I mean, it's it's. And all, there are tickets for sale too. Oh yeah, you can buy tickets as a game designer and game tester. Like there are so many tickets available. Yeah, that's so limited. you gotta buy. Yeah, like, it's limited like ticket. fifty or something like that. But so. yeah, how many people can? You it's kind of one of those unique. Store? Yeah, you got to come in knowing that hey, this is a prototype, and I'm right. going to play test and give you constructive criticism, and not. Yeah. Just come in and go, this game sucks, and flip it over. And, right. Yeah, don't do that. You'll be escorted out. This by, is asking for your opinion. By Josh or uh, Nancy or one of our other goblins. Uh, what else we got going? What is the next pre-release that I have to prepare for, for? Josh? Uh, the 17th of January. Yeah, we're not going to be ready for that. So you better gotta, sell something. Better get ready. You better sell something. Cause <laughs> going back to Theros. Going back to Theros. Back to Theros. Beyond uh, Theros, back to Theros. Theros Beyond Death. Oh, all right. Theros Beyond Death. Sounds pretty intimidating. Magic. Mm. 
Vanguard is coming out. They they always come out with something every three weeks. This this guys from Vanguard. I I can't keep up with them, and I'm I don't know what to do with them. They're crazy. But if you like Card Ride Vanguard coming in on Mondays, it's a popular game. I know. think they start showing up on Fridays, didn't they? Sometimes. No, that's you've seen. I've seen a few. Like maybe I like a uh, release. A random weekend. Yeah. Like a sneak peek release or whatever. Yeah, there's that. Well, what do you, does Magic does something every month, don't they? No, it's it seems like every almost like every month. month. Well, they come out with products, and I think yeah. it's getting a little heavy. Well, they come out with a lot of good stuff, but it's how do I put it this their way? Their base sets are every three months, and then their like extra story, stuff, and then like extra sets after that, or like every month or every couple, or whatever. And I think Man, you, you think they run out of ideas after well, however many years now. No, they keep plugging away at it. It's like yeah. anything else. Just reprint stuff too. Yeah, there's a lot of reprinted stuff. But uh, my thing is, like, pre-order if you want something special because they put out so much. i got to balance the – I can't just get a bunch of it and let it sit because i right. got to pay for it. So yeah. <laughs> if you prepay it, you'll get it for sure, and then I can gauge also how much I should get to keep in stock. And you know, It's just it's just the game we play. It's the balancing game. And then uh, what else we got? Uh, Josh? Nate? Every Friday, more forty k. D and D Wednesday, yeah. Friday night, what, kill team. We're gonna. Are you can we work on something tonight? Like after this? Yes, I Ooh. wanted to talk to you about that. Oh, okay, Ooh, that sounded like I'm in trouble, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna do some Good kill things. team stuff. Yeah, like that. Um, forty k. We're thinking about moving back to Thursdays. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a real thing. That's probably going to be a real thing. All right, right cool. I just gotta make sure that. That we, we're not stepping on toes of other games because we don't we don't want no, to compete know. with the other games. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know uh, Recess. Recess did it on Fridays. Right? I wouldn't I. even have tried. Yeah. So, but Kill Team will do on Fridays because that's an easy, yes. quick game. And then uh, Thursdays we'll probably move over to 40k. Yeah, we have all the terrain and everything, but we'll put more details when we get hash them out and everything like that. And then Josh is still working on the D and D Adventure League world for uh, Adventure League. I got a big old case up there. You see that? That's yes, fancy. I did. We're gonna put the world yes. up there with all the. Fancy who dad, who dad? Is your kid here today? No, Gavin. Uh, I was gonna say I need somebody to pull those hooks out of there. I'm tired of doing it. <laughs> it's gonna wrangle your kid into doing work. <laughs> yeah, we're almost ready for DMs. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna start pushing out from DMs, and then we're not looking for you to do a lot of work, but yeah. we're looking just to be part. Of it. Josh will have it, but um, yeah. I think we'll do. You a guys whole. have like a little primer pack of this is what we expect. This is what you. Basically, that's what I'm yeah, This is what you about. can. This is the subject matter yep. that you can do. This is the what work you cannot. Will, <laughs> yeah, the work will be on us, and the fun will be for you. Yeah. So just just remember that. Yeah. And if it's not, then you tell Josh, and then I'll make him do more work because <laughs> he's a cyborg. <laughs> he can be uh, shot up with adrenaline and stuff. Um, and what else? Well, anyway, that's uh, that. I can, I'm sure I'll think of something else as we go. But right now, let's get to what we're here for. Well, we're here for talking, but we're here to review the. I heard about this from somebody else, and this has been around for a long time. And uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics from uh, who makes this thing? This is. I'm going to butcher the name. Uh, well, no, not Goodman Games. Oh, Goodman Games. Goodman. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, there's a lot of people that went into making this game. A lot of people. Um, go ahead, take it away, Nate. Dungeon Crawl Classics, role playing game. Yes, big thick book. So uh, I'll yeah, stop talking it, now. It is a very <laughs> this. This is a big rule book. Uh, just just the book itself. Um, I mean, it clocks in at over 500 pages, and I mean it's a it's gigantic. It looks like a phone book. It it does. It looks like an old phone book, <laughs> but mm. inside of this is a complete gaming system, and it is, in my opinion, it's. It's definitely geared more towards the the people who grew up um, with RPGs of old. This this isn't like a, a new take on 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 something of old. They they they've added some some of their new rules to it. But it, I mean, it's it feels like Dungeons and Dragons, not like three point five or three point oh. I mean, this is like nineteen seventy nine, like charts and everything type of uh, too many too many charts. It's got a lot of charts. But it doesn't take away from the system, and it doesn't take away from um, the flow of the game, in my opinion. I think I think they did a great job in in bringing back that nostalgic feel, but giving it a, a, enough nuance that it it's still relevant today, mm-hmm. um, and bringing people back to the 
really how how role playing games were originally pre- presented. Like the art in there is on just about every page. There's either splash art or oh, full is, full pages. It. It's mostly ink, um, and so black and white. Uh, anybody who looks at it will see a lot of familiar names um, in the art credits from yeah. days of old. <laughs> this is that art that would freak your mom out if she saw it sitting on the Yeah, yeah. I mean, from when, when we were kid. growing up, and, yeah. and people are like, well, if you play Dungeons & Dragons, you're, you're d- devil-worshipping or something like that because it has pictures of demons and monsters and what have you. I mean, like, page one, there's a demon. So yeah. <laughs> it's not even, like, trying to play it off as... Okay, go ahead. Um. I think for for oh uh, what is it twenty five dollars twenty four ninety nine for yeah. this thing which is it's well huge. supported too it's got a lot oh, a, yeah, lot a lot of, of things stuff. for for DCC and uh, for your money uh, I mean it's gorgeous it's a great rule set it's a great book mm-hmm. now um, what makes this really interesting I think is is how the game is not only presented but how it's uh, how you actually play the game. Like, more than just the engine of the game, but, like, what they, what they call the funnel system. So, this game, you it's set up so that you start off as a zero-level character. You roll up just basic stat lines, and you're, you're going to make more than one of these zero-level characters. That's why it's called a, a funnel system. So, you, you get all these, all these peasants and nobodies. <laughs> um, basically, random dice rolls determines what you are you know your original profession you know wood carver or jester or uh, halfling or something like that right and you go as a novice green aired nothing into a dungeon and most of them will die because the combat system in this is very 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 deadly and uh whatever one of these characters makes it through and gets enough experience to gain first level that's when you actually even get a class before that you're just a zero level peasant so many, looking to make your fame and fortune. Do you start out with a couple characters and you said, well, how many? Well, um, they, they suggest between three to five three, for each player. Three to five zero level characters. Yeah, because it is, it, like I said, it's a it, combat's very deadly. Oh, um, so so you'd, if you had four players, you'd have like 20 guys. But it goes quick. It does go say, quick. No, not not, not yeah. in a bad way, but okay. Especially at low level. Something happened at the well, go see what's going on, and then yeah. it just all goes to hell. And then, well, I mean, I think it addresses... Part of the thing that I used to love about old games is just the random whatever you got was what you got. Yeah. You take three d six and you roll for your six stats straight down. There's no dropping the lowest or point by. It's just whatever fate gives you. That's what that character is. Do you roll up all of your characters like that? You roll up every single one like that. all of them. Are like all of that. them. It's a percentile to find out what your occupation was in a uh, like I said from farmer to to jester to there's nothing on there that's like. You know, there's no pit fighter or something cool like that. It's it, These are just peasants. These are just average uh, middle age, not middle aged as in like age, but medieval times professions. Yeah. And uh, with a with a bit of um, well, more than a bit of magic involved because you have elves and dwarves and halflings, which aren't races. They're actual classes. Like if you start off as a zero level halfling, that character is going to be a halfling. Uh, if you're zero That's level dwarf, class, that, yes, just like the old original Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> there is no, there's no halfling, to it, there's no halfling, halfling wizard or halfling rogue. Like and, uh, how about elf? Like elf, elf is the same thing. It's a, you're a demi human. Dwarf, dwarf, same thing. You're so demi human. That's your class. That's your class your and is. your race. It comes, it goes one nice. and the same. Which is, you know, it makes sense because I mean, in the old games, and this very much has the feel of of the old Dungeons and Dragons. Um, but it it. Everybody who plays a dwarf is, is basically kind of playing the same type of character, maybe with a, with a little bit of different flair to it, because mm-hmm. that core setting is still there. Like, it's not like uh, there's a huge amount of variety. A dwarf is still going to be tough and resilient, and, and an elf is going to be graceful, and a halfling is going to be sneaky. I mean, that's and they realize that you know what, we'll just put them together. And I, I personally, like I said, it's very this can hits you, that nostalgic itch. Yeah, can you really uh, well? Can you? Can you uh, customize them later? Well, when you cho- when you get if your zero level character makes it to level one, mm-hmm. that's when you choose a you get to choose your class. If you're a human, if you are a halfling, an elf, or a dwarf, that's you're now a level you're one. Just a level right. one dwarf. But you have cleric, thief, warrior, wizard, and that's only for humans. And that's only for humans. And then you have 
dwarf elf and halfling. Now elves, you know, they use magic too. I mean, yeah. they, they still have a lot of the. Are they like a mixture then of the kind of. Okay, you know, I get, it, um, I get it. I get it. I get it. But again, it's all random. It's a percentile rule, and also the system itself. In essence, it's a d twenty system, which everybody, anybody who's ever played D anD. d can realize a D20 system. It's, you know, you have a difficulty, you roll the die, and if you get above it, then you pass. Where this one makes it kind of interesting, it also uses really weird dice, too, because you have what they call the dice chain. You have a D3, D4, D5, D6, D7, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 20, 24, and 30. Uh, That's just somebody making charts. Well, here's the thing. What I like about it is you have, most of the time it's a D20 roll. Mm -hmm. However, there are some times where you are, let's say you are uh, facing something that's going to be more difficult for you to do. And instead of giving you a minus to that D20 roll, in some instances that happens, but a lot of times it's a minus to the actual die you use. So you go from a D, let's say it's a negative 2D. That means that's a negative 2 on the dice chain. So you go from a D20 down to a D14. So the oh, highest okay. you could get is a 14. So it significantly impacts how well you perform. Mm-hmm. And in fact, in combat, as you go up in level, you don't get extra actions, you get dice to use so most zero and one first level character you have one d20 to use in combat so each action you can move and and make an attack or cast a spell or whatever it may be um but as you get up like that second attack like a warrior gets a, a d14 for so he can do two attacks one with a 20 one with a 14 so he's not as good with that second attack but he still gets it you know what I'm saying? okay and there's other modifiers and stuff to it as well i mean it's the system is simple it's got complicated it's got a bit of clunk to it because there's a lot of charts. Like the, they really focus in on criticals and uh, mishaps or, or fail, critical failures and critical successes, which I think is really cool because each class has a different critical chart. Each um, spells, like I'd say a good, oh, probably three-eighths of this book is devoted to magic. And every spell is two to five pages long where it gives what the spell does, but based on your role, how well you cast that spell uh, has a different effect. Yeah. And magic is very, two, it's two, double-edged sword. Like, yeah. it, it is awesome, yet scary at the same time. Like the Conan feel. Yes, a lot like the Conan feel. Or even even Warhammer Fantasy roleplay to a oh, degree. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about right. that. But, I mean, this one takes it a little bit further. Um, also, the, the ability to, like... Uh, you have a, a attribute called luck, and depending on what you have in your luck, you can burn your luck to bring down that attribute to add to your roll. So let's say you roll something and you need a 16 to hit, and you only got a 14. Well, you can say I'm burning two luck, and then you add two to that. And now you now how many luck hit. do you start with? Is it Whatever, random? what it, between three and 18, just like any other oh, attribute. Well, you roll, yeah. And you gain luck back as you go. And in fact halflings and thieves get their luck back differently wizards on the other hand they can use because magic's so uh random well, magical <laughs> i guess there's no other way to describe it. it's just magical but they can actually use other attributes to get boosts to their spells and to what they call spell burning and stuff it's really so really they, cool it's a lot of like uh, I don't want to say number crunching, but it's a lot of detail oriented. Yes. All right. Like, um, here's a question I have before you go for yeah. What do they use for like a D14? A D14, you can use uh, a 20 sided die, anything above 14, you re roll. Mm. Okay. So it's not like any special crazy dice. Actually, th- they do make special crazy dice of, of different polyhedrons. Um, but a lot of these, like a, a D5, you just roll a D6, and if you score above, if you score a 6, you just re roll it. Mm-hmm. You know, a D7, you use a D8. D12 and D10, you already have a D14. It's a D20. It Same doesn't with, throw off the the chances. It minutely. I mean, yeah, okay. not really though. Like like a D24, you're rolling a 20 sided die and a and a four sided die. So if you score 20 on the D20, then you add the, the four sided die to it. And on a D30, a 20 and, and a well, 10. that also means you can never get lower than a two. And no, because you're not taking that. The only time you add the D4 in is if you get a 20. Mm, so see, if you roll a 20. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's too much math thinking for me. But, yeah, I could see where I could be like, eh, you know, I should get both. Well, this is the, the same thing. time. But uh, this this really does harken back to the old, like, almost just, role master where it had just charts upon charts upon charts. This one, 
it it really does go back to that feel. I mean, so it's, reading it's, the book, it's the the authors did a great job in being concise about how they want how they want the system to work, and they're concise about how that system plays out. And I, you could tell that the people writing it, this was a labor of love that they. This is probably this, to my opinion, it doesn't say in here, but in my opinion, this was probably a homegrown product that guys have been playing for years and tweaking. Yeah, for this years. has been around right for a long. time. I mean, even before they printed it. Yeah, like this. This was like somebody's D and D game. They're like, I don't like these rules. I'm going to put these rules in, and they really liked them and whatnot. Like. The, the funnel system is really cool to me. I, I like the idea of you just have these random peasants that fate decided to yeah, throw together. Yeah, a friend of mine told me that about that. I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. But I know they've been around for a long time. Yeah. And then you brought it up when I say, hey, let's do this. And you're like, yeah, it's the funnel system or whatever you call it. We just started with a bunch of newbies. and But anyway. Yeah. So and anyway. I mean, it, it's great for, you know, one-offs or, or for even like a, a... There's a lot of campaigns for this. Yeah, thing. I mean, no, no, you can do a lot of campaigns. There's a lot of... Uh, they have a lot of... Uh, adventures for this and oh yeah like that. but it is a deadly game there, yeah. there's no way around like getting a character like to even to fifth level is quite an accomplishment because the, the system is deadly and but it's meant to be it's meant to have you you have like this little pool of characters that you've kind of cultivated and some people are like oh wait. like me i do love making like a story and making a character i've i've loved storytelling but sometimes like especially with the, a game like this just having that random character is really just fun because yeah, you, you take something that you normally wouldn't do and you're kind of forced to do and if that's the only one that, like one of two that survive and you kind of develop it and you make if he doesn't yeah, and if he doesn't make it you make another five next week right yeah you know, okay i get it i get it i get it i like that a lot i think i think that, that aspect of it is really cool so you have a small pool of characters that you kind of use and and you know if they die they die if, if not then you pull somebody else out of the hat so <laughs> how's the system run system runs Fairly easy. I mean, it's got, like I said, there's a lot of charts to it. But the once you D, get it down. It's a basically a D20. It's a basically a D20. I mean, you any modifiers are clear in there. It's not ambiguous. The only ambiguous part of it is skills. They, they realize that just making skill lists is ridiculous because it doesn't truly. It's like, oh, I know how to ride a horse, but I don't know how to take care of the animal. Like, mm -hmm. unless I have that skill or whatever. Yeah. So they're just like, you know, we'll make them. You know, some ambiguity to it. So, like, if you let's say your profession was a woodcutter, right? You're, you're probably not gonna know how to fish, but you you definitely know about forests. You know, and like, and yeah. you can and you can justify that to the what, what they call it the judge, not you know, yeah, not the DM, but the judge of the game. Like, hey, you know, I I'm gonna make this role based off of of this background. And if you if you can kind of BS your way a little bit, you can justify knowing a skill but that doesn't mean you can't do it even if you don't you just are untrained at it it's a negative to it or what have you so it in that aspect i like how that could keep the game moving forward without a problem um but this is definitely uh in the vein of you know uh sword and sorcery hack and slash if you want i mean you could get into more detailed games but this the system itself lends itself really really well to quick quick to, to yeah like to the to the not even a power gamer, which is what I really like. You can't min-max in this because it's so random what you're going to get. So yeah. you can't be like, well, I'm going to take this prestige class and then switch class to this so I can get this bonus that will combo with this. So you know, I can turn the entire battlefield into darkness it's and just, I can see through darkness yeah. and shoot people. I mean, It's just too random to do right. that. Huh? Yeah, and I, it, to it, me, that's awesome. Now, magic in here is really where it shines because it is terrifying and amazing at the same time. Because if you roll poorly... Very, very bad things will happen. And if you roll well, extremely cool things will happen. But that's kind of the double edge of any type of magic. Even just learning spells is not an easy task and often comes with a price. Um, casting spells, you can become corrupted as you're doing it. Next thing you know, your character has a beak. So, I mean, it's really, it's a really <laughs> so, cool game. So they, it's, they take magic as it's really powerful, but it's really right. bad. Which and, I think it should be. I mean, I, you right. can't. You can't, un, you know, magic, magic really. It really it's magic. Yeah. You know, it, like it, it, I like one of the, the uh, examples I give in there is, is magic is not physics. Like you, you can't create equations and, and have, you know, like the example they gave that I thought was really great with the physics example is, is placement of a decimal point. Right. So let's say you cast a spell to, to conjure a dragon. You know, you cast, let's say, row poorly. Well, you cast point zero one of a dragon. So you get a talent or something stupid. Mm -hmm. Or you 
cast and you do a little better and you create 10 dragons or 100 dragons. It's, it's magic. It doesn't have that, you do this, this will happen. There's no set. Right. Or There's always that risk and reward. And and believe me, the, the risk and reward make it worth using magic, but makes it <laughs> it makes it dangerous to do so. So the overpower the overpower part of magic is taken by the right bad like things. okay yeah it, and well a that, fighter or something else more stable you know like well I, fighters like i like how they focus each class will focus in on what they do best there's no like if you are a warrior your character is going to be good at fighting stuff that's what they're that's what they're honed their skills that's how they're surviving mm-hmm. if you're a thief you're going to be able to to influence people or to to you know, sneak around or whatever i mean you're a cleric you're going to have a de- and the deities in this are really cool too like they they kind of made Gygax a, a deity and okay. everything. I mean, so I mean, it's really play homage to a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a book that is worth picking up if you are an old school role player or played during the the olden days of RPGs from the late seventies to probably mid to late eighties. Like this feels like those games of it, old. It looks like. You know, you would pick up that because I, I collect a lot of these old games. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them are just some guy hand drew the the cover, oh, yeah. And then it's like inside's a bunch of his ideas and charts, and oh, this is what we do. And you know, it, it, there was not a lot of completeness to it. Like there wasn't exact rules that you could argue about. You're like, yeah, right. go back and forth. And you this, know, this this one good. definitely defines its rules, but it does leave an open enough to interpretation. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I mean. Yeah, like here's this, and like even just flipping through it, I can see the charts in there, which are right. I immediately want to stop and read them just because it's random and it's fun. But yeah. uh, Oh, the spells section, like I said. I mean, you could you could go from just your spell failing to you know world, world opening up. Yeah, I mean it's it's really really cool, especially the higher level spells and everything, which are how's com- tough to get to. Is but. combat simple or rough or just? I mean, as far as combat, you have a difficulty or an armor class. You know, like if you don't have any armor on, then you have a an armor class of you know ten. If you have armor on, depending on what type of armor, you could have it up to an eighteen. So you got to beat an eighteen to hit it hit that person. Oh, and it's just like D20, yeah. just rolling it. But, but the luck aspect is kind of nice, too, because it brings in a, a cool... Because you can use that on so many different types of rolls, and especially, like, um, if you roll a critical fumble, you your luck... Let's say you have a, a 10 in luck, and it's a plus 1, you know, next to it as the modifier. Mm-hmm. Well, and that gives you a plus 10% on your fumble roll, so that... Or minus 10%, so that the effect of the fumble will be lessened because you just are naturally lucky. Oh, okay. And, and a lot of thought went into it. It's very concise. It's laid out pretty well. There's a lot of art in it. I mean, a ton of art. So there's some portions of it where the yeah. art kind of gets in the way. There's full-page art. Right. And there's giant splash pictures. Art. Yeah. Lots of splash art. Um, just like the old books. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it, it's, it's laid out in a way that makes sense. You can go through the book. I mean... It it seems like a gigantic book. I mean, it is five hundred pages. But for the the player, you're you're maybe reading only a hundred of that because really it's it's character creation, what what the classes are, and maybe some spells in the beginning. You don't have to get into how to run the game like beyond like combat and stuff like that. Like there's a bestiary in there, which a ton of monsters in it. it even That's has what a I was going to ask. Samples. Is, there, is there the monsters in? Oh here? yeah. The, the, I mean, this is like three books in one for average. RPGs because I saw when I was flipping through there's like a uh, judges section or something like yes that. that's that kind of gets into how, you know this is how you can run the game um, they give a lot of great stuff about like what they were influenced by I mean even just the the very beginning of the book in the introduction they're like this is what this game's about if you're looking for this this isn't it if you're looking for this jump in with both feet because you're gonna have a great time it looks like a lot of resource material too you could probably yeah. take these charts to something else like your other games and I I honestly think that this magic system um it's so in depth like it'd be tough for you to homebrew it all because I mean there's so many you know depending on what success level you get is different effects but I love it I love the magic in this I mean the magic alone in this was a was fun to read and was it kind of like open my mind to like it's it's not just casting spells i mean it's you're you're dealing with these magical things it's like uh it's i'm trying to i'm See, trying to put well, it here right words. here here not to, oh the corruption yeah here yeah. i'll just hold this up yeah even what he's talking about is the corruption for magic they give a good example here's a corruption of the magic and then it gives you a uh chart or a, a picture of a uh, wizard that just goes through various stages of corruption from a young man to a uh, a freak, an old freak. Well, you can see he gets a, uh, 
what is that a cockroach leg and, yeah you know I mean, it's it's, it's terrible it's really i love the magic, magic system yeah yeah i mean it's it's cool and it's not and i like that you become attached to your characters but you're not so attached that you know who cares they die. Yeah, i'll make they, a new one yeah i mean it just like any game, I mean, you can you can take this in any direction. They have campaigns for it. They have lots of source material. There's a lot of source material for this, and I know it's been. Oh, when did they start publishing this? If you don't mind, I want to say it was six years ago. No, it's older than that. Or is this the sixth edition of it? This is the seventh printing. All right. uh, it says 2012. I I thought it was older than that. Maybe not. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I remember Dungeon Crawl Classics for a long time. They did a lot of stuff. Goodman Games is actually old. This might you might be right. This might be guy's system that they finally published a few years ago. I just I really, I really like the system. I really like the uh, what uh, setup. New players or old players? Which one did you think? It's good for both. I think old players, um, and I mean by age wise, old players, not just you know, will really like it simply because of that nostalgic feel to it. If you played it, in the seventies, no, yeah, <laughs> like a, anybody who played. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons or basic D&D or like, but even new play, even people just getting into games like this, it's a bit of a clunky system for a novice. That's okay. That's what I meant to ask. If you were brand new to role playing, would you introduce to this to them or Um, stick with something simpler? I would stick with something simpler at first, but I think you you would gravitate towards this after a while. Like Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition, I think is the, is a great gateway. Yeah. We'll use that as the, right. The, the, the this is for somebody who likes D&D, but, is kind of like after a while Dungeons and Dragons get what I what a lot of people call rules bloat where you got all these source books and all this and this and this and this and this and so you're you're bringing like 12 books so that your one character can do all the cool things that like this it's like this is what you can do this is what you can't do you know there, there's mm-hmm. no prestige classes there's no kits there's no yeah I don't think the cleric they, does this and I a, think they published this and adventures yes that's that's all I've seen from them I and, seen and the adventures books. are are old adventures with a new take on them a lot of times and yeah I I really I like this game. I'm I, uh, if if I give it out of a ten, I'd give it at least eight point five to a nine. It's really? it's really is a good game. I think for an experienced <laughs> really, <laughs> I think for an experienced uh, role player that picks this up and sees all that old art and gets all those old charts that we used to remember rolling on and everything. I th- I think that will will speak. And what makes what cuts a uh, a cut above the old just playing you know the old game is that the system itself caters to it. It's not. Like the charts aren't a side note on it that you have to go back and reference. The chart is integral to the game, and you're not consulting twelve charts. You have like okay, the elf critical chart here it is, the warrior critical chart here it is. Every spell, this is exactly what happens with every type of rule. I like how they laid that out instead of being, but you know, it's the appendix N. You know what I mean? Oh, the yeah. book is an appendix N. So we have people that play this here, don't we, Josh? We have we have. Uh we have groups that actually play this. So. It's it's a fun game. Yeah. I mean, I like the 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 way that the you have the the character funnel of you know the you separate separate the the that cream got, from the chaff. Yeah, and, that's that's what got me. You start with a bunch of guys, you go down to one, and right. then that random one is what you get, and that's the whole random part about it. And then if it plays like D twenty, then it's easy to pick up, easy to, pick to up. roll up, and the magic is deep, and the charts are deep, and. Well, that's cool. Well, that's good. Well, and the price point is is fantastic. For, I mean, four ninety five. It does I, feel like a phone book. Though. Yeah. <laughs> to me, like when I saw the just the price. Not, on I'm it, not complaining for twenty four ninety nine though. But you can't complain. Like normally, this this amount of material and the artwork you're is, looking at over one hundred fifty dollars. You'd get the the player's handbook, the DMG, and a monster's manual. It's one hundred fifty bucks. This you're getting for twenty five. You know, with tax like. Twenty seven dollars, right? The artwork is also worth it. Oh yeah, the it's artwork. If you awesome. like old artwork or the old games or the old adventures or the old humor, yes, it's already just flipping through it. I can see some funny stuff in there. Well, there's there's one where the they have this guy and he's got a backpack that has a mule and I mean it's six yeah, times yeah, the size. Yeah. It's like encumbrance. So we don't use that rule. Yeah, know? like we don't care. I, you know, I just like it's, it's, it's a good game. It's fun. It's good. All right. Well, I'm glad you could uh, say suggest it. Yeah. Cool. It's we have it available, right, Josh? Yes. yes, we have it available, and uh, come pick it up. Yeah, pick it up. I mean, honestly, for twenty four ninety five ninety nine, that's something I'm probably going to keep in stock too. A stock item. Yeah, it's cool. it's, you can even take this engine and you can plop it into anything. They have a futuristic like game, like a uh, what's that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? Uh, no, Total Recall. Um, 
Well, he was in a game show. Oh, The Running Man. The Running Man. Yeah. They even have a game called X Crawl, I think. Is, they use these rules, I think. And it's basically a, a Running Man type adventure. Uh, Gamma World? Not Gamma World. Gamma World. Wow. Uh, sorry, no, it's not Gamma. What's the one before it? Uh, Metamorphosis Alpha. Okay. I think they also did that and used these rules for it, too. So redid it. So they, they did a lot of stuff. And uh, I, I could be wrong. Somebody correct me if I am. But Well, they, they actually... They, what I like too is at the very back of it, if if you remember all the old RPGs, they had a um, list of their old old, yeah, old the stuff products. You can buy. They and buy they, this and then yeah, the description. I mean, literally, it's just tons and tons of adventures. I back noticed here. those are in full color. The ads, yeah, the ads are always in full the ads are in full color. But, but yeah, it's it's. But they also have stuff for uh, for some of the the cons that they're going to be at and what have you. I mean, it, oh, it's, yeah, there's a lot of cool. It reminds stuff. me of, like I said, that it's almost like an underground. It's, this is the underground role playing right there. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's cool. All right. Well, come in, pick it up. It's cool. Have fun. I know. Anything else? Uh, no, just come on down to immortal sometime. Well, I didn't mean that. I meant, uh, closing thoughts on it. Yeah. Give me that. Well worth the money. Sorry. I am like totally <laughs> out of it today, but go ahead. Closing well thoughts. worth the money. Um, the book is beautiful. Uh, like like we were saying, I can't say enough about the artwork. But the system itself, it's once like if you're an like, experienced role player, even if you're a novice and you read through it, you you, you could pick it up. And mm-hmm. it's it's really a good system. It's not a bad system at all. It's not excessively clanky or anything. Once you understand how it flows, it's a really good system. And I think I think people will enjoy it once they start playing it. Yeah, for the price and what you get, it's good. Right. At, cool. at the very least, it'd be a good weekend of fun, because or good pickup game of just here. You know, here's a bunch of peasants, and you guys are going to <laughs> you're going into your first adventure. Go to town. You know, yeah, like you're you're going to seek your fortune. In I'd glory. love to play this game with people get really totally attached to their players. Oh, uh, here's your ten guys. Oh, okay, cool. Like, ah! <laughs> and then cry and see. If it is not unusual to lose a few people per <laughs> combat because it is it is a deadly game, but it. Can it's I meant heal to be that him? way. <laughs> yeah. Can I heal him? Nope. <laughs> nope. You're not level nope. one yet. Sorry. Nope. Got <laughs> nothing. Just die. He's just dead. Just keep but moving. But it, it does bring in like, oh, I kind of like if you do do that where you have like four or five characters and you kind of like one of them really, well, you're not going to be as, you got to get them in there so that they get experience at the same time. You're going to kind of oh. meet shield them yeah. up, you know, like I've, it, it's an interesting idea. Bob's getting out of here alive. Well, it, you know, and but that makes sense. You got one person who's like, you know, I'm going to let these suckers die and I'll just take the loot, you know, like cool. So. All right, well, cool. Pick it up. It's cool. We'll be here. What do you want to do next? What did we get? Fate of Cthulhu? Fate Ooh. of Cthulhu? I think yeah. we're going to do that. I think we just got that in. Awesome. do that one? Yeah. A couple of weeks? Or, you know, if, if somebody leaves a comment, you know, hey, can you review this for us? To, yeah. Uh, want to see what this is about. Well, next week, next Friday, whether you want to or not, I'm going to do um, Lord of the Rings... Oh, yeah. Strategy game yeah. from Games Workshop. Been reading the heck out of that. Finally got my starter box painted by James Brundage. It looks beautiful. It's it on does. display out it there, does. guys. It Come is. on I in if I you see it. I gave him some more stuff. He's it looks great. Super happy with me right I now. I love the uh, the ghosts. He did a good job. Yeah, he did. So we're going to be doing that. Review that. Uh, hopefully I can get a game or two in uh, before then. And then after that, we can do probably Fate of Cthulhu or something like that. Sounds see good. See what we got going on. Uh, any other things from the store, Josh? Just shaking your head no. I do have a note up there on my new bulletin board, though. Yes. Oh, yes. Don't take... <laughs> <laughs> you can't just come in, pick a book up off the shelf, and uh, sit down and start reading it. Yes. This is not a library. I hate to be rude. Right. But nobody wants to You can to flip read. through the book. Yeah, but if come you're on. standing at the, at the, to purchase it, to look through it's one thing, don't take it in another room or try to take it in the back or... You know, sit down and break my bind. You know, this yeah. is not a library. Please, it's. And I'm not being rude or mean about it, but no. we sell these things. If I yeah. can't sell them, then I can't be here. So, and it's just that's just rude. The alternative is cellophaning them all, and I yeah, nobody likes that. Would you like that? Here, no. push this button, and I'll get it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's nice, but yeah, this is yeah. Just make sure that you treat it like do. a state liquor store. There you go. Yeah, you can't <laughs> you can't go in there and drink. All right, you can't go in. I mean, if you want to buy it, go ahead and knock yourself out. I'll put it right on your tab, and you can pay before you leave. But don't uh, don't come here with no books and expect to use the books that are here as your personal library. That was my only complaint. Anything else? No, Josh? Come on down. 
Josh keeps shaking his head no. He's not going to add anything to this. Got nothing to say. He's going to give me the finger. <laughs> and that's nice, Josh. Oh, well. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming in. Or thanks for coming in. Thanks for listening. Hopefully you come in. Uh, hopefully they're listening. <laughs> hopefully they're listening. Somebody is. People do listen, believe me. I know so, yeah. If not, we're just doing this for love of it. Yeah. And one day, something will happen. But, uh, yeah, check out our website, immortalsinc.com. I'm still not used to that. Go to our website, immortalsinc.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, all those other channels, right? YouTube and Instagram. Instagram and uh, we have the game room, the private game room we can rent. You can rent the studio if you need to say something or talk to somebody. We... Uh, Wednesday night gaming, Monday night card fight, uh, hopefully Thursday, uh, 40K. 40K. Friday night uh, magic, uh, drafting, uh, Saturday's, uh, or Friday night also kill team. Saturday is EDH. Sunday is Savage Worlds. Yes. With John Dunn. And uh, Mondays um, again, I came all the way back around to Mondays. What else uh, we do on Mondays? Come on, Josh. What else do we do? I don't do? know. I don't work well, here. Tuesday is, is, is you the, don't uh, work here. It's the Call of Cthulhu. Uh, oh yeah, Call of Cthulhu stream on Tuesdays yeah. for uh, with John Dunn. That, that won't be happening. Of, that won't be happening until after because this coming Tuesday is New Year's Eve, so we're not doing so. That. Yeah, so it'll to, be another week. <laughs> get to work. Yeah, right. I gotta work. Get to work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So not this week, but next week. But all the episodes are backlogged, and you can yes, if you want to watch all of them up to uh, the current. They're back there. I think we have what thirty. No. There's a 31, 31 episodes, 31 episodes of the Masks good. of Narlothotep. So. How long did John say that would go for? Two years? One year? Month? No, I think no, it's like, 18 months. Yeah, he said 18 months. 18 months. It's a it's a monster campaign. Oof. Monster. That's I mean, it's big. It, it's it's a good it's a good game though. I'm enjoying. So I shouldn't it. ask him to do Horror on the Orient Express afterwards. Oh my gosh, that that's another two years at least. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that's another great. I know, especially since I redid it. It's amazing. Yeah, I got to read it. Sit on my shelf, things to read. Oh, it's huge. It's a huge campaign. And terrible, it's so terrible. Good. All right, guys. Till next time. See you later. Bye. Bye.